Welcome to Empower Humans. Welcome again to the Empower Humans podcast. This is episode 156, my friends. Today we have Marcus Bell, uh, also known as Bell Ringer. He's got a website called bellringermusic.com. He's also got another website called 100daysimpactchallenge.com. That's the number 100 days with a Z impactchallenge.com all together. And uh, boy, we talked about uh, a lot of great, great principles today, success principles, um, a lot of details surrounding just the ideas of consistency and habits in general and repetition and uh, just a general attitude towards our lives and greatness. And boy, he's accomplished all kinds of great things. He's a very humble, modest person, but he's also, you know, he's worked with some of the biggest, most, you know, widely known household names in the music business, uh, everybody from Nicki Minaj to Snoop Dogg, Katy Perry, and so on and so on. Uh, just tons of big artists uh, as far as a producer and composer and a very well accomplished musician. And whether you're into all that stuff or not, most of us are into music in some capacity. And it's just a fascinating thing, especially for me, because most of you know that I'm a musician myself. But regardless of that, and in a much grander scheme of things, uh, there's a lot of great, great success principles here uh, attached to this particular episode. Uh, before we jump into that, I want to remind you, as always, up front, you are absolutely priceless. Nothing can change that. Don't let anything uh, change that reality for you because then you'll be living a lie. Do you really want to live a lie? You are absolutely priceless. Don't let what anyone else has, does, says, is in general in their lives have any bearing on your self-view of recognizing that reality. You're above the monetary systems of this world. The riches are found in you, as I always say, and you're going to learn that as you listen to this podcast. Go la- go back and listen to other episodes, too. And uh, also along with that reminder, you are priceless, is you are not alone. Please, please, please remember that. It's so easy in this world to get stuck in this, this place where little by little maybe we isolate ourselves, imprison ourselves, and somehow convince ourselves falsely, I might add, that uh, we're alone. And I'm not coming down on anybody for that. It's a very easy, natural thing to happen uh, in this world. But please reach out, info at empowerhumans.com, at empower101 on Instagram and on Twitter, um, at empowerhumans on TikTok. And, uh, you know, friends, family, neighbors, people around you, there's lots of people around us, a lot of times more than we even recognize, that are more than willing to help as uh, needed in our lives. Uh, I want to just touch on our challenges real quick. And we talked a lot about this in the uh, podcast today with uh, Marcus, but uh, study, you know, keep studying, start studying, whatever the case is for you. There's no day like today to start if you haven't been. Um, and, and that's a very broad challenge. And the reason for that is because I want you to find things that actually resonate with you to study and to stimulate your minds and hearts and souls. Uh, but whether that's fiction, nonfiction, you know, I love biographies, autobiographies, uh, learning, of course, success principles and things and, and trying hard to apply them in my own life. None of us are perfect, but there's something great about studying and tuning ourselves like an instrument uh, every day, you know, using these music analogies, especially with a podcast like this one. And uh, so do that, please. And the next challenge is make great moments. I can't tell you enough how many uh, great moments I've been able to generate with my boy, especially during this COVID thing. You know, take lemons, make lemonade kind of thing. Uh, A lot of people have been able to spend more time with their families and loved ones and people they care about most. And uh, such is the case for me, at least, as it concerns this pandemic that's happened here. Uh, But whatever the case is, start now. Make great moments, take initiative, uh, surprise people, put your love and heart into things. Love is a verb, which is an action item. It's not just a noun. Love just exists. Love is a verb. Um, And that's where great moments uh, come from. So uh, do that. And uh, those will be pillars in our lives to overshadow the other nonsense. I always say that uh, we all have nonsense in our lives, mistakes and failures and other things. By the way, we talked a lot about failure today. Uh, Failure as a means to success. And uh, the last challenge, very simple. Let's keep doing this podcast together. I'm really, really grateful to Marcus and a lot of the wisdom that he imparts. Again, the website is 100 days with a Z impact challenge altogether.com. 100 days impact challenge.com. Days with a Z. Uh, go check that out. Um, I think a lot of people are going to find a lot of value here. And he's got another uh, success uh, boot camp as well. It's called Wealth and Impact. Uh, see if you can find out about that as well. And uh, whether it's a fit for you or not, go check it out. And uh, if nothing else, learn some great, great success principles today. That's why I wanted to invite him on here. So without further ado, let's jump right into our interview with Marcus Bell. Uh, here we go. 
We are pleased to welcome Marcus Bell to the Empower Humans podcast today. Marcus is a musical producer, composer, and all kinds of other great things. Plus, obviously, father, we were just chatting a little bit. And I didn't want to get too deep because I want to chat mostly on the podcast. Uh, but Marcus, how are you today, my friend? Fantastic. Thanks for having me on your podcast. It's a pleasure to uh, be able to engage with you in a conversation around empowering humans. Yes, there it is. Um, yeah, and that's what we do. Um, I'm not sure if we're going to release the video version of this, but we are recording video and I'm wearing my Empower Humans hat in case anyone's wondering. Uh, <laughs> yes, and that's what we've been doing for a few years, Empower Humans thing. It sounds like we're somewhat in the same vein. Plus, you know, I have a little bit of a musical background. I play the drums, guitar. I went to Musicians Institute down there in Hollywood like over 20 years ago. <laughs> but um, tell me a little bit about your background, Marcus, and, uh, you know, what brought you to music and all the things that you're doing? Yeah, well, before I go there, I, I, I just want to respond to uh, the fact that you're a musician yeah. as well. And uh, I do know the music Musicians mm -hmm. Institute. I've spoken there a couple of times yeah. uh, as a guest. And the thing about having a music background, mm -hmm. which is one of the reasons why I think it's very important that music remains um, or becomes even more of a priority in school is what we know about music and its impact on our brains, right? And being able to, to form patterns. Um, my music background has served me in other capacities, such as in business and being able to, to see connections between things that a lot of people can't, um, that yeah. I could attribute to my musical training and, uh, and practices in becoming, uh, you know, in terms of uh, discipline and, and uh, repetition of activity and uh, studying, uh, going from what I call, there's a framework, you know, there imit there's imitation, there's emulation, and then there's innovation, right? And so, so having uh, those uh, kinds of distinctions that come from the music world, you know, as I, as I was, uh, you know, studying saxophone, right? I, I play <laughs> a lot of different instruments as well. Yeah. But when I was like studying saxophone, for example, um, even though that wasn't my first instrument, my first instrument was piano when I was two years old. So, oh. but when I was studying the saxophone, I was studying Charlie Parker and John Coltrane and, you know, uh, a lot of different great jazz musicians. And that was my imitation. So I would have to imitate what they sounded like, right, in my study in, in order to, to be able to uh, get my facility and proficiency up. Well, it's the same thing when it comes to something like, you know, a business domain, right? Who are the, the cold trains and the, the birds to study in marketing or in sales or in uh, customer service? And so, so as, as I have ventured into entrepreneurship, um, you know, I started in that early, but I approached it just like I do learning a musical instrument. And yeah. so, yeah. Well, yeah, this is something that maybe only musicians can fully understand, <laughs> but um, I think people can understand the concept, even if they're not musicians, most people are at least into music. Right. Um, mm -hmm. But there's something about music in general that uh, both in how we process and express it and the left brain, right brain components of it. I mean, it's great for kids and developing all of that and math and everything else and all the things you're talking about, about comprehending business and just all these things. In fact, just in the last 24 hours, I rewatched the movie Ray about Ray Charles. <laughs> what a fascinating, awesome movie. And so many like ups and downs and painful things in his life. Plus he was blind on top of that from the age of seven. And, mm -hmm. but, but the point being, cause you're talking about, okay, when you're starting out in music, you start to kind of emulate people a little bit. Like, Oh, I look up to this people. My, in my era, it was, it was rock drummers. Cause I play the drums mostly. And uh, so I looked up to those guys, guys like Danny Carey of Tool and Dave Grohl and, and more intense and less intense people. And then they got into jazz and other things. And then in, in Ray's case, Ray Charles, it was you're good at emulating Nat King Cole and these other people. We got to find your voice. 
And and that was like such a massive takeaway from the movie. Both times I've watched it because I only watched it twice and one of them was in the last day. <laughs> so I just think that's a poignant, you know, recent current event in my life of find your voice as part of that whole thing. What are you going to say? Yeah. So uh, a couple of things. So I, I love the right brain, left brain, because music really is a full brain activity. Yeah. It's a full brain activity. And um, and is and what I'm talking about in terms of like repetition of activity uh, over time, developing mastery over an instrument or developing mastery over a domain of life's activity, it really speaks to what I've created with the 100 Days Impact Challenge. Yeah. Now, inside of the 100 Days Impact Challenge, you know, I have guest speakers come on every Monday. And so I've had Olympian athletes. I've had uh, some pop stars on there. I've, I've had uh, top of field and, and various disciplines. And the thing that is consistent across the board, and even this morning we had a, a successful entrepreneur um, and but you can see this across the board. There's some consistent things of repetition of activity, right, of practices, of putting in themselves in community, which is kind of how I was not kind of, but I've designed a 100 days impact challenge to create that environment for people to really take on something for 100 days and create repetitious activity every single day that moves forward their most important aim in life that, that they want to take off for 100 days. And so every successful entrepreneur, every successful recording artist, every successful athlete that I've interviewed across the board has had some moment in their lives. And sometimes that moment would be 10 years or 20 years or 30 years or, or nine months of activity or a hundred days even um, of consistent activity that, that really shifts something of importance and value in their lives. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. And, and such a profound, I love things that are universal. Uh, these are universal truths. Everything about repetition Again, from music to athletics to business, everything. You want to go get sales, you got to repetitively go after these clients. You want to get better at this groove on the bass or on the drums, or you want to become a better sprinter or swimmer over and over and over and over and over and over and over. You got to do practice, this thousands of thousands. Practice, thousand. practice. Yeah, like that whole 10,000 hours thing people talk about, about mastering something. And I, and I would submit it goes beyond that. You never arrive. Like I interviewed uh, Ray Luzier, who, who uh, is a drummer of corn. Now and he's, he, I said, well, some might say you don't have to practice anymore, and he said, oh no, I practice plenty, plenty. Like he, he, and he said he went on to say he never feels like he arrived. It's he's always feeling like he's light years behind where he needs to be. And I think there's something to that hunger that we got to find in ourselves. Um, I mean, I digress a little bit, but good stuff. Go ahead. Well, well no, I, I, I wouldn't call that a digression at all. I think it's 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 a crucial thing because um, when you talk about ten thousand hours. You know that that does a disservice, um, I believe, because when you are doing something repeatedly over time and creating a practice in your life, it goes beyond that activity. You start to become it. <laughs> yeah. Right. It becomes a lifestyle thing. It's not a thing based on you know, some goal or aim necessarily at a certain point, a transition happens. And this is why the hundred days impact challenge is hundred days, because it hits across that transition point where you start to embrace the becoming of something where you begin to know yourself as someone who does something right. Or someone who uh, does this type of thing or bees this type of person. Yeah. 
no, absolutely. And that's, it kind of goes back to this, you are what you eat kind of thing. Like if you, if you keep eating this or that, I'm not going to, you know, we could say in and out burger or Taco Bell versus uh, asparagus, you, you start to become literally that thing. And so what we're consuming and then outputting starts to become us. And, and I think that's just a nice universal truth again, to, to just let's sink in. Let's all you and me included, let this sink in as, as just facts of life as we govern ourselves day to day to find, find happiness. Now I want to get into this challenge. I, I want to also get into your story a little bit too. Like, uh, sure. you know, I always love hearing people's background of, of what inspired them or, you know, it's interesting when we watch, I watch a movie like Ray and all the things that happened in his life. And he was just drawn almost like gravity to music, to the piano and singing and all these things. But what, what brought you this direction? If you don't mind me asking Marcus. Yeah, sure. So I, I kind of put it like this. I was born into the music industry. And so I started on piano when I was two, as I mentioned earlier. Yeah. And the way that happened was because I had this ability um, that my parents noticed to just focus on something for long periods of time. So they would put rocks in front of me and I could just play with rocks for hours. <laughs> pennies. I could, I just remember playing with pennies and creating things with pennies and all that for long periods of time. And, and as the story goes, my father said, uh, you know what, let's try Marcus on piano. So they got my grandmother's piano and brought it to from Portsmouth to Norfolk, Virginia, and put me on the piano. And unlike most kids at two years old, I wasn't banging on the piano. When I was in front of the piano, I would intentionally press the keys on the piano yeah. and start it to shape sounds. And, um, and so piano actually, as far as I can remember, started to become an extension of my self-expression. Yeah. So because I've been playing for so long, I'm able to channel emotions through that activity. And so, um, so I remember practicing when I would practice the scales and the chord progressions and, and all of that, the world would just disappear. And it would just be me and the music and like the music would speak to me <laughs> and tell me other things, especially when I start getting into uh, playing jazz, like the, yeah. <laughs> I, I would, you know, remove myself and, and be used by the music to, to communicate to audiences. And so, um, but the thing that was the pivotal moment where I said, you know what, this is what I'm going to do for the rest of my life happened when I was eight years old hmm. and I was performing at this NAACP event and I uh, had written a song is my first time performing a written you know song that I had written and mm -hmm. I was there performing in front of this audience and I was nervous because I didn't know how it was going to go and it's my first time doing something original in front of a live audience and, and it, it was kind of you know, like a regular program. So it was a little bit boring before I got on. So I didn't know how the audience was going to respond or anything like that. And after I finished performing, I got this standing ovation and people were crying and, and cheering and, you know, smiles on their faces and everything. And I realized in that moment, the power that music had. Yeah. And I decided in that moment, this is what I want to do for the rest of my life. I want to be able to impact audiences. I want to be able to change people's mood. I want to be able to uplift people through this vehicle for the rest of my life. And so I was fortunate to discover early, like a passion for that, creating things that make people feel things Yeah. or expressing you know, feelings through music. Yeah. So yeah, I like that. There's real power in that, isn't there? Like connecting with an audience 
or, you know, people do all kinds of things, even if you're a salesperson or whatever, it's connecting, like truly not just, it's all just about money or some, you know, fleeting nonsense at the end of the day, which money matters, but it's, it's really still at its core, obviously for you about connecting <laughs> with an audience. And you found that's, you're very fortunate to have found that at such an early age um, because, you know, I, I know a lot of musicians and they didn't, they, I, I hadn't even started playing drums by the age of eight myself. <laughs> so to have found that that's your life's calling and not that drums is my life's calling, but I still am very, you know, uh, passionate about music and I still play music and stuff, but um, that, that's a beautiful thing. And uh, go ahead. Yeah. So well, just to clarify what I discovered was my life's calling was uplifting people. Yeah uplifting humanity and and exchanging value with other human beings mm -hmm. and so so the so what i got was that music was a vehicle for that one of vehicles and i discovered other vehicles like you know creating courses like wealth and impact boot camp and um and things like this 100 days impact challenge these, these are just vehicles for that bigger big for yeah. my life which is in service of uplifting people yeah and that's real important i mean finding that right vehicle because we all need to use some vehicles in our lives whatever that may be and thankfully a lot of us have different vehicles because that that brings a lot of great uh, variety and innovation into all areas of the world <laughs> uh, not just music but other areas too and now I understand fast forward a little bit. Um, you got to a place where you're at a pretty low point in your life, uh, you know, in some major debt and, uh, you know, a lot of ugly things happening and you weren't uh, where you wanted to be. Let's just say you want to tell some of that story, too. Yeah, sure. Yeah. You kind of pointed to this uh, in your comment, a couple of comments <laughs> back. And there's a distinction between being great at the craft of something like music and being great at finances mm -hmm. or being great at marketing and yeah. business, yeah, right? And so, so what, what happens is, uh, and this is part of the, the starving artist narrative, mm -hmm. right? The starving artist narrative is that, oh, you just focus on the art, right? Well, what I discovered was that, well, no, there's focusing on the art, but as important or equally important, or maybe even more important in a lot of cases is the communication of value of that art or the communication of value of whatever that offer is that someone has. And so, what I had to, to discover for myself was that, how to articulate value in a way that people would want to exchange their monetary resource for my offer of value. And, and that was the way I was able to get out of $75,000 worth of debt, which yeah. is how I help others, right? I, the system that I use to pull myself out you know, out of debt and, you know, and, and into uh, what I would call, you know, other levels of, of wealth and um, was, was is something that I've put together in a program called Wealth and Impact Bootcamp, where there have been people that have become financially independent, you know, using the same um, methods that, that I have used. And, and it took me doing a lot of study on, well, you know, how do you get out of debt? right? How do you, and then as I started to meet multimillionaires and billionaires and so forth, I started to refine and, and define and, and uh, basically uh, learn that, how, how finances become an area of specialized knowledge, mm. not just for myself, but for others as well. And so, um, so yeah, so I, I you know, at being concerned of how my rent was going to get paid, yeah. you know, being concerned on, you know, well, am I going to be able to, to travel, you know, to 
go to the next gig or, you know, do I, do I need to do another run of oodles and noodles? <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, yeah. In order to, to uh, sustain my health. Uh, do I need to cancel my gym member? Like all of I've, I've experienced all of that. And so I can relate to people that have not developed that skill that have not, <laughs> yeah. you know, been able to uh, acquire the knowledge and the mentorship needed in order to transform their economic situation. And so, um, so I had to go through that journey and I'm glad I did because it allows me to be able to, to have a, a you know, a direct experience lens for what it is that I, that I help others with. Mm. That's beautiful stuff. And it's, uh, you know, a lot of people, you're, you're definitely not alone in the sense of going through some of these ups and downs, especially economically too. It's uh, I, I, for one, have been there. And I think probably most people listening have, have been there in some capacity. Most folks I've known who've, who've had a measure of, of success in the world have, have, have been there too. And, and by the way, I, I listened to Warren Buffett. Um, well, I read something that he had said that he doesn't want to work with people who haven't experienced failures, which I thought was really interesting. Like if these are new entrepreneurs coming out of nowhere and they hadn't like experienced life and had some failures, um, we, we put out some podcasts with a couple of our podcasts. We have another business podcast that talks about, well, recently we, we talked about fail in order to succeed, but, um, and that's same same thing. I mean, I could go off on tangents on that for days, just because like you talk about Babe Ruth as the home run King. Well, he also held the record for strikeouts <laughs> and had way more strikeouts, by the way, than home runs as a little side note. Um, but this is all just stuff for us to absorb as people and um, go ahead. What were you going to say? Yeah. Listen, uh, when I look at the songs that have been yeah. released that have become hits versus the amount of songs, the hundreds and maybe thousands of tracks, yeah, for <laughs> you sure. know, music pieces of music that I've created in my life. Right. It's, it's, uh, you know, <laughs> there, there are more pieces of music in my catalog of 10,000 songs. Okay. That don't get used, but there are a handful that drive that particular part of my business, right? Yeah. And this yeah. is the case with, with every business, I would assert that, you know, you may have, um, you know, a lot of different offerings in the marketplace. So if you look at record labels, I'll just use, since we're, we've talked a lot about music. If we look at major record labels, there are thousands of artists signed to major record labels. And there are a handful that are actually producing the revenue and are getting the attention of the major record labels, you know, um, like that, that, that are based on, you know, financial motives. Yeah, absolutely. You've got to have more, again, going back to the baseball analogy, you've got to have more at bats, which means we got to go out ready to swing, swing for the fences, even if, even if we are going to strike out because more often than not, we will. And that's just reality. And we got to accept that as part of the uh, path towards uh, success for lack of a better word. Yeah. And, and actually it's an exciting thing. So a lot of people hold it as a negative, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, I failed at, well, those that excel and have achieved a lot in the world, everyone knows that it requires all of it, right? So uh, one of the, the guests in the inner circle was talking about this earlier, was that there's a sacrifice that happens when you're going out to achieve something of greatness. And so it's deciding what it is that's going to get sacrificed. Yeah. Intentionally, intentionally deciding what the thing is or the things are that you are gonna sacrifice for this greatness, because otherwise you're not going to be great <laughs> or you're going to go for greatness and, and there'll be some negative consequence out of that activity going for greatness. And most people don't go for greatness. Most people get stuck in average yeah, because mediocrity. they're unwilling to make the sacrifices required in order to achieve great things in the world. For sure. No, that's absolutely true. And, and it's the other thing of like a lot of us as people, myself included at times, 
it's like you're scared of what you really are capable of and so like uh oh that's for the next guy i'm not i'm not meant to be great or something and when you talk about sacrifices like i believe that from experience too both uh third party watching others and my own self that the universe or god or whatever you want to call it tests you to say oh you said you want this oh really well let's see if you really want it <laughs> and so go through the challenges you know some of these other folks i've interviewed too it's like especially the artist type of folks it's like there's there's plenty of dark times but you got to muscle through that in order to to get to those uh, other areas of brilliance and success and so there's there's a test factor. I, that's just my experience. I believe very very strongly, and I think I could back it up uh, that there is a, some element of test involved. Oh, you really want this? Okay, <laughs> let's let's see for real. I understand. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, I, I would say uh, part of that, um, Phil, is that if you haven't done something before, you don't really know what it's going to take. Right. Yeah. That's right. And, and so, so there, you, you know, you can ask someone what it took for them, but that might be different for you. Absolutely. Your journey may be different. And so, so the context that you are pursuing something from is as important as the content of your activity. And so, which is one of the ways that I designed the 100 Days Impact Challenge is to kind of hold all of that in. So inside of the challenge, there, there's a lot of specialized knowledge around behavior, specialized knowledge around creating context so that, you know, you're able to hold it all. The things that you fail at, that you didn't plan on, the things that you excel at and having context for that excelling, like mm -hmm. something bigger that you're up to, like all of that is, is kind of baked into um, the 100 Days Impact Challenge. And, and that's not by accident, right? It's, it's taken into account and into consideration the things that we as human beings need in order to, to move towards something of greatness. And, and a lot of people don't know, or, and just reading a book is not gonna give it to you, right? Mm. But being actually active and, and pursuing something in a structure with mentorship, with community, actually, from what I see across the board is what makes the biggest difference um, in people excelling and achieving and doing something that's not average. Yeah. Yeah. I think we as people need to just first embrace the fact that we can be great and not be scared of it. Just you can be just like accept that out in the ether of the universe and our brains and our lives that you can be great in whatever area that is. And then embrace also the journey involved, you know, like not, not all pop stars, as you well know, or other sorts of maybe performers have gone through, you know, to reference the movie, Ray Charles, you know, not, not all of them went blind at the age of seven or went through the challenge. They've had their own versions of challenges. Um, and, you know, I know Billy Joel looks up to Ray Charles. His daughter's name is Alexa Ray after Ray Charles. And, uh, but Billy Joel didn't have to go blind and deal with all this stuff being, you know, a black guy in the South and all the other crap that Ray Charles had to go through. He went through his own journey and his own challenges and some other things along the way. So embrace your journey, almost, almost not like in a trepidation kind of way either. Like this is my journey. This is mine. I own it. Let's go. And, and just, just like you would drive in your car down to the grocery store, like let's go. And there'll be some bumps on the road, so to speak with that analogy, but let's embrace the journey. Not, not just the destination of the grocery store or of, pop stardom or of being a business giant or whatever, but the journey to get there. And I think there's, there's just real power, hidden power in that, that people, uh, we humans, I think, especially Americans, Westerners are always so quick to look at the destination, but I, I just think there's so much power in embracing the journey and it, it ain't easy. Go ahead. Yeah. Well, one of the things I talk about in, in my program is like all about this, right? in Wealth and Impact Bootcamp is that, see the destination, what, what doesn't get talked about often is that once you achieve something, there's a factor that is required in order to maintain the something. Yeah. And that's maintenance. 
that's you know if you think about someone that has lost weight right <laughs> yeah they had a goal i want to lose 10 pounds all right mm-hmm. they lose 10 pounds yay they made the goal 10 pounds what happens next yeah right so what happens next for most people is they gain 20 <laughs> right they gain 15 right they achieve that thing and that that's it because their context was small their context was small and so they achieved the thing but then it didn't have a lasting impact now if you build in to that goal maintenance mm-hmm. right then now we're starting to get into what we were talking about earlier lifestyle now now you have become the person that is at that weight that does things that maintain that weight over time yeah right and and so a lot of times you know we're we're given uh to just you know it's not anyone's fault this is just kind of like these are cultural narratives these are uh cultural expressions of game activity right you know there you know we see someone you know, racing across the track or, you know, at, there's the end of the game, right? And so so the focus yeah. is on the end of the game as opposed to the activity that the players have to do, you know, like the, the game really is in the activities that the player are doing. Absolutely. Right? That's where the game, the game is won in practice. For sure, yeah. I mean, there's so much depth to that. There's there's all those things about what's in your head too, like free throw shooters. They separated out who who sat there and just like visualized hitting perfect free throws, nothing but net. And those who are out physically practicing um, in, in some of those studies, the guys and gals perhaps who sat there and just uh, did it in their heads did even better too than the ones out there just physically going through the motions. But you know, I digress a little bit on that, but. The point is we got to get our minds right to then maintain what you're talking about, be in that place that it's not, Hey, I want to lose town for the lose 10 pounds for the sake of losing 10 pounds. It's I want to become the person that's now 10 pounds lighter. I'm that person now. And I'm going to stay that person like Stephen Covey and seven habits. I talk a lot about that too, but the seventh habit is sharpen the saw, keep it going, maintain whether we're practicing a musical instrument uh, you know, our friend Ray uh, Luzier, he, he's still practicing and he, by all accounts, is probably one of the best drummers in the world. But uh, you're still maintaining and sharpening the saw. It, it, there's just a universal principle. Someone told me the law of entropy, which is you're always moving in life. You're never just stagnant. So we have to get, embrace that reality. So if, if we are always moving, we're either moving closer to or, or away from where we want to be. And therefore, we do have to, like you're saying, maintain, which is go through those motions day in and day out those habits to keep that um now i understand yeah, yeah go ahead what did you want to did you want no, to add it's, more? it's funny you mentioned ray because I, I remember meeting ray charles when i was a kid oh yeah cool and um and you know he was constantly practicing <laughs> yeah, no kidding he was constantly practicing yeah and uh and it, it's is very the fact that the game is won in practice uh, would if that is the context right in addition to like like the activity of actually playing the thing right so there there's the actual playing the thing which you point to like thinking through seeing yourself as the mm-hmm. player Right, seeing yourself doing the activity. I used to, I used to practice the piano on the school bus without a piano. Yeah. So, so one of the, the ways I was able to achieve mastery was I would be on a school bus, and I would. You can't see my fingers because this is an audio podcast, but but I would be fingering the the, the scales on my lap. <laughs> And no one would see this, but I was practicing all the time. Yeah. I wasn't just on the piano practicing. I was visualizing and and training my hands, right? And practicing 
the fingerings and and all of that same thing with the saxophone like i can i can play the saxophone like an air sax saxophone like i'm doing my hands right now is like an air saxophone mm -hmm. but it, but i'm i'm playing patterns with my hands right now but you're not hearing a saxophone but when i bring the saxophone to my lips then you will start to hear the results of my air playing yeah yeah for sure that's that's absolutely true what a great you know digging deeper on that same topic same same thing and and that's just true in anything um we just got to find the things that really matter to us in life and then and then hone those skills and just rinse and repeat <laughs> constantly and just get better and better and better because that's what life's about there's no plateaus in the sense of we've arrived we've already covered this topic we've just got to constantly uh if, if anyone's worn out yet we're drilling home we've got to constantly be moving constantly keep it going. Like I, I spent yesterday with 4th of July, as we record this, I spent the day with my 101 year old great aunt, all of her sisters are gone, including my grandmother. And she had three sisters. And some of my audience knows a little about her, her name is Eleanor. She was one of the Rosie, the Riveters, World War II that built airplanes. And she kept going after the war and into her 90s, she was still working, building planes. People, a lot of people listen to this know this. And, uh, and so because of that, she goes, they, you know, LA times picked it up and they put her on NBC news and on the today show. And she was on Ellen and stuff. And so I've talked to her yesterday. She lives here in Vegas. Now um, they closed the plant. She just stopped working. She didn't even retire. She said, people ask, well, what's, what's your secret? She's 101. She's got more energy than you and me combined. And her secret is keep moving. That's it. She's 101. Keep moving. It's not, she didn't eat hot dogs. It's not, she didn't do this or did do that. The only thing she did do and didn't, you know, not do or whatever was she kept moving and that's not necessarily in everyone to go work into their nineties in that kind of way in a physical job like that. But I think there's some inspiration and some, some real life knowledge to be gleaned there. Keep moving. She said, when all my sisters retired, they all started to deteriorate and that's when they started to go downhill and dementia and different things started happening. Um, so when you start to sit stagnant, uh, the universe uh, catches up to you or whatever. I don't, yeah, yeah. It's, it's funny that you mentioned that. Um, and, you know, your your great aunt sounds fantastic. Maybe I, I could uh, pick pick your brain about getting her as a, as yeah, a guest on 100 Days <laughs> Impact Challenge. Um, one of the things that I, I found, um, because, you know, some of my courses have seniors in them, right? And, and people at, you know, as there's someone that that I support as in their 80s, right? Yeah. That that have, you know, this person has created a new business. Yeah. Right. And uh, around health and, and longevity, et cetera. And there is this thing in our culture, in the Western culture, yeah, of like retirement or you know, a devaluing of the um, the opportunity for those that are seniors. And, you know, I'm, I'm against that ageism. I'm, I'm actually against all isms, racism, sexism, ageism, ableism, et cetera. Yeah, me too. I'm against all that. Go and, ahead. and, and so, so that, that's, that's like the, my big, you know, battle <laughs> is, is with that. And, you know, there are those that, um, that are seniors that think it's over for them, right? That, oh, I don't hold value anymore, mm. or I'm not up on what the latest anything is. And, and there's so much value there's so much value that is just being left dormant inside of our society. Uh, so much wisdom, so much perspective, yeah. right? Like generational perspective that gets missed out on. And so, so when seniors come into to wealth and impact bootcamp, I'm like, yeah, cause I, I, I get an opportunity um, to support their reinvention. They're reimagining their lives and creating something of value out of you know their their end of life or their beginning of life 
right? So a lot of people are ending one life and starting a new life. Yeah, no, absolutely. It's, and you got to maintain that mindset. There's no, oh, the age of 65 is when we just stop and just get ready to go into the grave. It doesn't have to be like, if, if my great aunt had done that, she would have missed out on nearly 40 more years of life working and, you know, not to mention being on TV and all the things she's done, but uh, she didn't do it for that reason. She just wanted to keep moving. She, anyway, she's a funny person because you sit next to her and she, her legs just constantly kind of bouncing. Like she just got energy galore. It's, <laughs> so not everyone is like that. And I realize that, but we can all get our minds like that. At least, at least like we can at least try uh, we can, we can try to, and just embrace the principles of the journey and keep moving. And it's, it's just fascinating yeah. stuff. Well, well, here's the, here's the thing. Um, we don't just have to try, right? There are things that we know that help. Yes. Yeah. There, there's someone that created as part of their hundred days impact challenge, a gratitude movement. And it's called the discover gratitude movement. His name is Noah press uh, McIntyre and Noah's gratitude movement is all about this, right? And, and there, if you are grateful and express gratitude, and he has all these different uh, access points of expression of gratitude based on, you know, all this research that he done, he's got his doctorate in, in, in this area. And there are things that we know to do that will offset Alzheimer's and, and, um, dementia and those things, uh, we don't have to just think it, right? There, there's activity that can be done that will support that particular outcome. And the same thing uh, around longevity and health and, and you know, all these different areas of life, there are known things to do. Yes. <laughs> Well, yeah, very true. It's, you know, as the old sage Yoda said, do or do not, there is no try. So it's not just try. <laughs> I mean, yeah, we can yeah. try is one thing, but go yeah. ahead. Yeah, And Yoda is a great example because, you know, that points <laughs> to is important to have mentorship. Also, yeah. And a lot of people um, miss that piece. Uh, fortunately, I, I'm, I was fortunate to have mentors early and now as a mentor for people that want to do great things with their lives and create their, their future and journey. It's like, that's, that's such a, a crucial piece of empowering humans. That's right. Well, yeah. And uh, I couldn't agree more. It's uh, as I look at your journey by, by the way, for example, and, and I know, especially in Hollywood, like I used to live in LA no one likes to be Mr. Name Dropper and stuff, but uh, I know you've worked with a lot of household names in the music business. And, you know, I can be the name dropper because I know some of them from Snoop Dogg to Nicki Minaj to Katy Perry and, and others like that. Uh, and not to shift gears too much because we're talking about success principles, but how did you personally get to the place where you're doing all those uh, amazing things and working with these uh, very talented big name artists and, and stuff like that? If you don't mind me asking, how did you get there? persistence <laughs> yeah well it's um 46 right now it's been a 44 year journey <laughs> all so right you got 44 years <laughs> yeah that's a journey <laughs> of practice of um of learning systems and connecting with amazing people that are connected to amazing people and all of that see for, for me, it's not about the household names because, you know, there are people that I know that um, are soon to be household names. I, I, th there are uh, people that I've seen go from uh, you don't know who they are to, you know, when Oprah had her show on regularly and there was a there was an artist that was signed to, to Sony, uh, a new si signing to, to Sony Records, and we were in the studio one day and the next day, um, you know, the session got canceled because she got a call to go on an Oprah show because of her story of being homeless. Right. Mm. And so in, in one day she was in front of the American public, right? Like that. So I've seen that enough. I've had friends that have had number one songs, you know, happen 
And, you know, they went from just their first beat not that long ago to having a number one song. And yeah. so, so the, the, you know, so it, it's more to me, the important part is, you know, being very clear on what you stand for, mm. for yourself and others. And then being able to articulate that stand for with others being able to articulate that value the value that you've created in your practices being able to articulate that in a way that that someone whether they're a celebrity whether they are an influencer whether they're a politician whether they're a business owner that they're able to see that that articulation of value in a way that they want they want to have you on their project. They want to promote you in the company. They want to involve themselves in the things that, that you're up to, or that product of what you created is something that enough people say, yes, let's go with that as you know the song that's gonna make it on there, or, or yeah, that's exactly what I'm looking for, right? So, so that there, there's, there's a, um, a bit of, of all of that, right? The context yeah. of what we're talking about in terms mm -hmm. of practices and all of that, right? That it's like, you know, there's some artists that I have credits with that I've never met before, right? And, you know, others that I've ran into and said, oh, hey, right? And there's others that I have relation, you know, deep relationships with. And so, so for me, there, there is the, um, you know, there's a human aspect that is most important um, as far as I can tell, right? Mm -hmm. the, the who do you wanna spend your time with? Who do you want to share your specialized knowledge with, your offers, your, your value with uh, as a collaborator? Yeah. And then yeah. as an audience. Yeah, it's bringing that value to the table and articulating it and uh yeah it's uh, people know these principles i think we all inherently kind of know what it takes but some of us are more or less willing to actually go through those steps yeah i i don't know if i agree with that assertion okay <laughs> I, I yeah i think i think um you know it, it's there's so much narrative in the marketplace, that's actually the wrong narrative, right? Which, which narrative of? Uh... So, so I give you an example. Go ahead. Um, so that so there's a narrative that, um, you know, the starving artist narrative, for example. Yep. Right. So with that narrative, I mean, I say starving artist. You know exactly what I'm talking about. Yep. If I say starving artist, everyone in your audience will know what I'm talking about, about that, right? Mm -hmm. That's a narrative. I know plenty of multimillionaire, uh, you know, billionaire artists. There's a, there's a person in my program that sells million dollar paintings. Cool. Right? Yeah. And so so that's a narrative. And you say, well... Okay, well, we know that they're not starving artists, but I would assert that most artists don't know how to not be a starving artist. Mm. Yeah, that's that. Well, that's all very, very good and somewhat indisputable points. It's, 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 and going through a program like yours, the 100 day. Uh, sorry, 100 Days Impact Challenge. And it's 100 Days with a Z, by the way, for those listening, dot com, 100 Days with a Z, impactchallenge.com, uh, to really learn and internalize those principles and then hear from great uh, guests like you're talking about as well. Sounds like that, that are going to bring some tremendous value and real life experience and stories and just all kinds of, uh, like you say, great value to the table so that people can take, incorporate that into their lives and then apply it to, to finding their voice and their success in overcoming some, you know, challenges and things along the way. Tell me more about the challenge. Um, what, what else is involved besides, uh, obviously there's some curriculum and there's some speakers, but tell me more. 
Yeah, so most, most challenges um, aren't designed the way this one is designed. Okay. Right, and um, you know, th this challenge is unique because of how I've designed it with the support of specialized knowledge. And if someone does the challenge the way it's been designed, they will actually achieve their aim. They will actually become the thing that it is that they're going for, right? Yeah. Whether that's starting a business, whether that's a health aim, whether that's improving health. Been, when I said earlier that I've seen a couple of people become financially independent, that came out of specific activity that they did when they created their challenge uh, for 100 Days Impact Challenge. And so, so all the other things like the guest speakers and the, and the, the community and the budding uh, system and the awards and the gamification and the, and the points of contact and the reminders and the structures and the workbook and the course inside of it, like all those things, like if, if, you, if you put all of those things together, it's like, how can you not win, yeah, right? For how sure. can you not achieve what it is that you're aiming for? And a lot of people, fail with the new year's resolutions because they don't have all that structure. This is one of the, the reasons why I created this is to provide what's missing mm. uh, when people take on things. And, yeah. you know, and also you can have, you know, another challenge the great thing with the hundred days impact challenge is um, it's a general challenge. So if someone has a challenge that, that they're already in, they can actually bring that and collapse it with the hundred days impact challenge and you know, have that be their specific focus. But uh, but the way way this is designed is not just a challenge, it's a movement. It's not just a movement, it's a lifestyle. It's not just a lifestyle, it's a way of being. It's not just a way of being, it's a way of uplifting your life and, and those around you. Oh yeah, that's beautiful. I love it. Um, I <laughs> you're bringing a ton of value to the world and I just, uh, I'm excited for people going into this challenge because it sounds like you've already had a lot of great success stories and certainly you've got an awesome track record. And I always love talking to musicians of any sort, even especially accomplished musicians and producers like yourself. <laughs> so that's, that's amazing in and of itself. So people need to go through these processes and there's so many other things, like there's all these things cross my mind as we're talking here. Uh, but at the end of the day, what final thoughts do you have for our audience as far as uh, the challenge and success principles or anything, all of the above and more? What, what are your final thoughts, Marcus, that you'd like to share? Yeah, I have a, a couple of thoughts. So first of all, if anything has resonated with you inside of this conversation and you are seeking uh, mentorship, community, to go after your most important aims. Um, you know, there's Wealth and Impact Boot Camp, which is a boot camp intensive around building wealth and impact mm -hmm. in the world. And, and you know, there's there's an application process for that. Uh, but then there's the 100 Days Impact Challenge, 100 Days with a Z, as, as Phil mentioned. Yep. Um, you know, you can go there and get yourself in community and, and, and get some structures around your most important things that you want to do in your life is a good starting place. Right. And, um, and if you're not doing any of that, I'd like to encourage your audience, whoever's listening to be about the growth and development of your inside. Just as you may invest in your outsides, whether that that is, you know, uh, you know, clothes and cars and wh whatever ac activities, going to Disney, all like, you know, people invest so much outside. Whatever it is that you take on, spend as much of your resource, attention, time, money into investing in your insides, in your mind. Mm -hmm in your mindset, in your thinking, in your, your development of knowledge, in your emotional well-being, in your internal health, that that has 
the most value. Yeah, I, I absolutely couldn't agree more. And when it gets right down to it, we've talked about this recently, both in the podcast and even just in my life with lots of folks about uh, just this inside out approach to life. And there's tons of power to be found there. Uh, instead of letting the external things control our feelings, emotion, all these things outside of us that we can't control. Well, guess what? We can control what's going on inside. And uh, just as our friend Tony Robbins has said, like, if I had the best brownie recipe on earth, uh, and, and I could tell that to you, couldn't you make those same brownies? And so just like Marcus here has all the ingredients, uh, on the table <laughs> and the whole recipe. Uh, so I have zero doubt that, uh, all these folks could uh, come to you and, and get some great value with those recipes, so to speak. And, uh, and, you know, in some cases, maybe even turn their lives around, um, it's, it's just a really important uh, thing that you're doing. So again, it's 100daysimpactchallenge.com. That's days with a Z, 100, the number 100 days with a Z, impactchallenge.com. I want to make sure we get that right. And of course, uh, you've got another website called, uh, is it bellringermusic.com? Yeah, bellringer. I was looking at that earlier. Um, so people can check you out there as well. Um, anything else before we go, my friend? No, just uh, love yourself and love others. Yeah. And as we say to our audience, number one, we're flattered you spend time with us. And we always say, empower yourself, empower the world around you. Thank you. And uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks so much for listening to Empower Humans. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review this podcast. For more great content and to stay up to date, visit empowerhumans.com. We'll catch you next time.